We are back live. Sort of. I think that's cool that you got to hear so much of that song. <laughs> a little technical difficulties. No, there. no, it's not difficult to listen to Quiet Riot. It's water under the bridge. It's water under the bridge. <laughs> yeah, to yeah. Stand on. He got one right. <laughs> he got uh, you one just right. witnessed it. You just witnessed it, kids. Uh, he did get a cliche correct, or a cleach, as I'm sure is how he would pronounce it. <clears throat> So, Nestor Garza Romero, Emil Sotopovinsky, Kegavine. I'm your host, Chris Guzman, and Timmy, producer Patterson over at the controls. 11.5 million people tuned in. Uh, Nestor was not one of them. Um, to see it work. <laughs> to see I didn't have water to stand on. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell can't stand on water, dude? 11 and a half million people Williams, tuned man. in to see. <laughs> Tune in to see Vitaly Klitschko, or oh, Vitaly, as I was saying last week. Um, good <laughs> Lord. Um, 11 and a half million tuned in to see uh, Vitaly Klitschko uh, win last uh, Saturday night mm -hmm. in so Stuttgart, Germany, over Juan Carlos Gomez. Uh, knocked him out in the ninth round. Uh, it was a pretty good fight. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about it in a little bit more uh, more detail. Uh, at the I actually didn't watch it live. I watched it on the second broadcast. Uh, because I could watch it on high def. Well, I didn't officially watch it live because I watched it, like, delayed 10 minutes. <laughs> so I can't really claim that I watched it live either. But Everything I that I was watching actually happened 10 minutes before. Yeah, I watched the replay. Was it ESPN or ESPN2? I don't even remember. Uh, but I didn't watch the one on ESPN Classic because it's not offered in HD. And if I get a chance to watch it in HD, especially if it's an hour after the fight, if it's not the next week, you know, I'm going to watch it in HD rather than... Because you are an HD snob. Yeah, oh, it just yeah, it just I like to see the sweat flying off the guys. It's a little bit clearer. <laughs> uh, Showtime. <laughs> Last get off of that. <laughs> Shut up, Tim. Woo, you made it a little bit clear. Oh, he's sweat like, flying off the guys. I see. Like, uh, I can see the <laughs> sweat running off the guy's back. <laughs> That's all right. Steve was watching Ellen. You'll be able to watch uh, this entire broadcast again on walkonwater.com. <laughs> Showtime is really going to make uh, HBO oh, um, <laughs> give it a run I'm for another, its money. I, I didn't beer. mean to really do that. but um, This month on Showtime, and there's going to be piles and piles of excellent fights. You've got two installments of Showbox plus a Showtime championship boxing. Um, you've got, uh, well, our good friend Derek Finley. Um, tomorrow, uh, Saturday night, pardon me, is going to be taking on Andre Durrell, who's 17 and 0 with 12 Ooh, knockouts. Another Olympian. I know. Wow. Uh, Andre Ward, and now he's going for uh, for Andre Durrell. So, uh, guys named Andre on the Olympic team generally have Derek Finley's number. But yeah, this guy, uh, Andre Durrell, he is a, a, a bronze medalist, not yeah. the gold medalist True. that, that uh, Ward is. But uh, it's still, he's been looking pretty good in this fight. <laughs> not that Finley hasn't. Uh, Finley's actually, he had a really short amateur career yeah. and uh, learned learned while he was in the pros, and it took him a little while to develop, you know, uh, and his defense is considerably better than it was a year ago. So, uh, well, his management believed in him enough to, to get him in there on, I believe it was only his fourth pro fight against Andre Ward. It was yeah, very I'm, early. It, it might have been six. He was still, it was still only a six-rounder, so, you know, it was pretty It was early. an early, well... It was early. It was an early pro fight for Andre Ward as well. Yeah. So for for two guys with the skills that these two had to fight each other that early in their careers, interesting uh, interesting management uh, decision there. But made for a great fight. Um, uh, the the better man won that night. Even Derek Finley will say that he doesn't think he was screwed or anything. But um, a week later on Championship Boxing on Showtime, you've got Timothy Bradley against the WBO champ Kendall Holt. Now that's gonna be. Badass. Yeah, and they've been talking a little bit of crap about each other coming into this no. one. No. So, uh, not that Holt. Really? Not that Holt ever talks crap, but. Uh, I know. Bradley's. Uh, Good church going boy like he is. Yes. Bradley's just saying, we're going to see when we get in the ring, basically. And uh, um, my pick is Bradley in that one. I think Bradley's going to beat him. Uh, I don't know if everybody's going that way, but. Uh, well, when Kendall Holt, uh, in his last fight when he won, that was not a. Uh, that was almost a fluke. Well, it was. I think he, he's defended it. You're talking about when he caught, fought uh, Ricardo Torres. Yeah. I think he's fought once. He's fought once since, since then. So yeah. yeah that, that, but uh, when he fought Torres, he got caught. He, he got knocked down twice in that first round, and then uh, caught Torres with a headbutt immediately by that right hand. So. <laughs> headbutt. <laughs> it was a headbutt combination. He learned from the best. 
former five-time heavyweight <laughs> champion of Andrew Holyfield. <clears throat> You've also got uh, Yuri Orcas Gamboa is going to be on Showbox a week later. And as well as on Saturday, April 25th, you've got Carl Frock taking on the former middleweight champion of the world, Jermaine Taylor, for a uh, WBC super middleweight uh, yeah. championship. Fight. I haven't so. seen much of Frock fight. Uh, he's he's just coming into the mainstream, and uh, I mean, he stepped into a big time here with with Jermaine Taylor. So, well, Jermaine Taylor's coming up in weight, which means I generally like his chances. But Carl Frock is a natural super middle. And, uh, um, so I mean, he's got he's got his work cut out for him. That's for sure. That's yeah. for sure because uh, the uh, the the level of competition that Jermaine Taylor has fought far exceeds. But you Carl see, there's a lot of talent here sliding over Showtime from uh, from HBO and actually from ESPN. Gambo has actually been an ESPN fighter mainly. He is a babe in the woods, almost completely born on ESPN. And so is uh, Andre Durrell. But and Andre yeah. Durrell and Finley both fought on ESPN as well. So yeah. they're. I mean, you got guys moving up to, to fight on Showtime, and you got guys sliding over from HBO to Showtime, which is kind of a parallel move, not not necessarily a step up or step down because they weren't pay per view fighters. Uh, obviously, HBO pay per view is the big, the about as big as you can get at this point. But uh, I would say, but that that's limited to this year. So uh, you're looking more, uh, um, what do you call it, cable networks? Very much so. Oh, you said it correctly there. Uh, we also got Winky Wright taking on Paul Williams. Uh, in about two weeks from now. Very so exciting. We'll make our official picks next week. But and, uh, I don't think we agree. Just off the top of your head. Off the top of your head, what are you going with? I think I might be going Winky. Uh, That's not, a good and, answer. I mean, you're wrong, but go ahead. And uh, it's <laughs> and it's rough for me to go that way because I am a big Paul Williams fan. Yep. Uh, but I just think the the weight, weight advantage that Winky's going to have in this one is going to overplay uh, – Paul Williams, a distinct advantage that he's had in the past in his size. Nestor, any thoughts on this? Oh, Winky Wright, who is all defense. Paul Williams, who is all offense. You know what? I got to go with Paul Wright. I got to go with Paulie. Okay, I, you're I, combining I, names there. Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> that way, I guess you can be right, yeah, I guess. Definitely. I said Paul. I got to go with Paul. I said I got, right. I got to go with Paul Williams. Okay. I, 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 like, I like his style. I, I don't think the extra weight's going to hurt him because I think he's a huge – Huge, tall welter man. man. <laughs> very, very large. So I, I, I don't see that it's going to hurt him. I, I, I think like Wiki Wright might actually get stopped for what I believe would be the first time in his career. Stopped? Wow. Well, Paul Williams, dude. Throwing those two by fours. Nah, well, that and the fact he's that he's throw like a lot of punches. eight foot tall. And, like and Wiki has Wingspan had trouble with guys that throw a lot of punches. In if the you throw punches in bunches the way that, that, uh, Wiki. Paul, that, that Paul Williams does. The way oh, that yeah. Paul Williams does straight, and they're straight. Around. They're crazy straight, and they're insanely strong. Um, I'm, I'm very much of the mind that Paul Williams is going to win I that. Think, I think the straight punches are a little bit rough. Uh, Winky, you need to come around the outside for Winky. Uh, hooks and crosses are, are what scores on Winky because of that, that uh, I don't know, what's it called, peekaboo defense that he uses where he basically just holds his arms up and they cover from his forehead uh, down, to, down to his waistline. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. He's got the short torso with the long arms, so it works out pretty well for him. And we'll close out with uh, this. I'm going to let Nestor actually take this one. Um, we've got a headline right here uh, that came across the wire yesterday. Raul Macias, Raul El Raton Macias, passed away yesterday at the age of 74. <clears throat> we, uh, we got to do a great interview with him. A couple of years ago, which at is the Boxing to say Nestor, game. which is to say, Nestor Garza Romero got to do an excellent well, interview I, with him. I, the Bolo Punch Boxing Hour did a great interview with him. Yes, sir. Uh, we were able to talk to him and, and sit down with him, probably twenty minutes, half hour. It was a good one. And Not he, only that, uh, we got to sit down and have breakfast. With the, with yeah, the he's <laughs> staying at our hotel, but he uh, not only a great boxer and a champion. Uh, but also a, a, a big actor, big time actor down in, in Mexico, and and he uh, then went on to train several people as far as uh, went on to train boxers and stuff in, in the in the small town that he grew up in. Former bantamweight champion Raul Raton Macias, rest in peace, champ. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back with all the fights that got us through the week. This is Bola Punch. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> 